Deep into the Arctic Circle, to the fast-changing front lines between U.S. and Russia, while Russia's war with Ukraine seems far away from there, there are increasing tensions, and our warming planet means what happens in the Arctic Circle could have far-reaching implications for us all. Arcana Whitworth embedded with the U.S. Navy and got exclusive access to a special training exercise. ABC News given exclusive access to the United States Navy ICE-X training. The exercise getting underway amid growing tensions and changing geopolitics in the Arctic region, a landscape prime for Vladimir Putin's expansion ambitions. As he militarizes his part of the Arctic, he has the most coastline of any one nation. Is the U.S. prepared for the long term? I would say we're very prepared, and these exercises are absolutely key. I'm not concerned about really any threat. We are ready. We will execute orders. Temperatures at negative 20 degrees and below with wind chill. The Arctic is still the fastest warming place on the planet. Scientists also travel to the far northern region to work in conjunction with the Navy. They are studying the cracking and melting Arctic ice. Do you feel like there's a rush now more than ever to gather some of this information? It's more important than ever that we take this data and we start to really understand the whys of how it's happening so that we can feed that back to the broader scientific community and uh, eventually the policymakers. As the region changes from white to blue, it will be more accessible for not only shipping, tourism and resource development, but it is also putting Russian forces even closer to U.S. borders. Out here, equipment and endurance is put to the test. The Navy, along with civilian scientists and engineers, set up camp on an ice floe 160 miles away from land. They're going to take us over to ice camp over there. They call it Ice Camp Queenfish to honor the first ever submarine to operate under the ice. This right here is our logistics tent. Underneath the ice, Navy divers and two American submarines, the Pasadena and Illinois, train in launching torpedoes along with finding and invading enemy subs. We're an Arctic nation. It's very important for us to operate up here. There's a lot of people who'd like to hide from the U.S. submarine force. I just say they're not very successful. Swimming through icy waters, divers retrieve each torpedo and bring it back for data collection, learning how to better locate a target in this inhospitable environment. We're going to deploy the divers and go from that particular angle directly to the torpedo. The biggest challenge would be determining how much weight the recovery team is going to deploy inside the water. Taking a helicopter from camp further onto the ice, we embarked on the USS Pasadena. So here it is, that's the sail. Allowing it to punch up through the Arctic ice as thick as five feet or more. Welcome aboard. <laughs> All right, let's go. Ice columns plunge deep into the ocean, so the Pasadena has to dive at least 150 feet before it can move forward. Careful helmsmanship under the ice canopy is key. To the launch cycle app group. The submarine is relegated to internal navigation systems because they can't surface daily to get GPS coordinates. Satellite signal doesn't travel through, uh, through the water. So what we do is we use a system of lasers, accelerometers, and other equipment to keep track of where the ship has moved since the last time it had a GPS fix. The Pasadena can be equipped with up to 20 torpedoes. Launch accuracy in this frigid water can put a strain on vessels' firepower and sonar equipment. We're putting a lot of noise in the water that's all just bouncing off these keels, and it gets really confusing to us and to the, uh, and to the weapons. That's one of the biggest challenges we have of kind of making sense of all the information and uh, picking out the, the one, two pieces that makes the most sense to operate the ship. For successful undersea warfare in this dangerous environment, they have to constantly adapt their tactics. In this ice picking exercise, something they had never done before, they successfully lodge and hold the 350 foot submarine just under the ice, turn off the engines and essentially hide as the other submarine tries to hit it with training torpedoes. That was excellent, good work. On the doorstep of one of our fiercest adversaries, the Navy is confident it's ready for anything. We have the largest nuclear submarine force in the world. It offers us unprecedented mobility, didn't need to come to the surface, and you could stay submerged yeah. for as long as you wanted. Any adversary doesn't know where we're at. We're exceptionally stealthy, and we're watching all the time. The Navy very confident about their ability. Kana Whitworth joins us now from Anchorage, Alaska. And Kana, uh, you're back from that remarkable access to how the Navy is training. You spent three days with them in sub-zero temperatures, then on a submarine. Uh, what struck you most about what you saw? You know, Lindsay, I think to no surprise, the toughness 
of our Navy and their adaptability. I mean, it was really incredible. You have to think about a lot of those divers you saw, they're stationed in Hawaii and they were up there in the Arctic diving under the ice and absolutely loving every second of it. Also, those men on the submarine having to deal with a scenario and an environment they had never been in and doing exercises they had never done before and doing them successfully. And Kenny, you're also learning tonight a very important piece of Arctic climate research has been halted as a result of Russia's war. Right, so we have to keep this in mind that the Arctic is warming twice as fast as everywhere else on the planet. And most of the Arctic is in Russia. And there was a huge study looking at the melting permafrost there. And what the melting permafrost does is it emits these greenhouse gases into our atmosphere. Well, that study was now suspended. And one scientist I heard from says they're very concerned now, Lindsay, because that could lead to severe miscalculations when it comes to how aggressively we must pursue pursue our emissions reductions. There are real global consequences there, Lindsay. Wow. All right, Kena Whitworth, we thank you so much for your coverage there in Anchorage. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.